the extra point with 6.16 to go here in the fourth quarter. But now a discussion. Was there a penalty called on that? You, you said there were uh, too many people on the field, Rick Viger, right? They had, they had too many on the field. That's yeah, right. that's what it was. Illegal participation on, is the call on Viger. And he'll kick his most important PAT of the year. 6.16 to go here in the fourth quarter. We're tied at seven. As the referee Paul Green, what's he doing now? Well, you don't take this point off. The, you don't take this off. I, I hope they're not going to consider taking it off because I would not I would not take the point off and go for two here. I don't think that's even going to be considered. Well, we still do not see the uh, kickoff alignment. As Viker is standing back at the uh, two-yard line, half a blitz is up at the 45 and a few others. Standing around the 15-yard uh, line, the penalty was against Viger for illegal participation. Too many men on the field was the way to sum it up. So the uh, ball, is, now is that a dead ball foul? Uh, no, no, it's not. We have a dead ball yes, foul. Is. Dead ball foul means they'll have to try to kick team. it again. We'll now is that the pressure and in? On Hill. Well, I don't understand that. I'm, I'm going to have to check my rule book again, Lee. Dead ball foul. Hill will. And here's the youngster is celebrating over on the sidelines and now is called back into the battle to try to do it again. Well. Sherman Lee will hold. It is still 7 6 Viger. And Blunt will have to go back and try again to get this all important extra point. Well, uh, he's got the confidence now that he can do it. Waiting for the snap, ball down, kick up, and this one is right through the uprights, and again, we do it again, and it's tied at 7-7. 6 16 to go here at Pritchard Municipal Stadium. We're filled to the gills, over 17,000, they say, and the Comcast Cable, WNTM 710 High School Football Game of the Week will continue in 30 seconds. At last, I found a local... Leopard fans have a lot to cheer about now. Their team is back in the game. They've tied it at 7-7. Seven and seven. That was a 55-yard drive and a very important penalty against Viger, roughing the passer, kept it alive. Lee Shervani and Rick Cleveland. Leland Huey, our spotter up here in the broadcast booth. Here's the kickoff by Bryson. Good night. This one is blasted out of the uh, stadium, and that'll come out to the 20-yard line. And Rick... I think I'd be safe in saying this game has more than lived up to its billing. Well, it definitely has, Lee. All the excitement you would want has been a tremendous defensive struggle, almost like the offensive game that we saw with Murphy and McGill. This is the counter to that, a defensive struggle between Viger and Blunt. I'll have to thank our schedule maker. First down and 10 at the 20, Damian Jones. The quarterback wearing number two coming on the field. My thanks to University of South Alabama, Lean Color and Design Center, Camellia Bowling Lanes, Dairy Fresh, the best in the land. And this game has the makings of the best in the state tonight. Holman, Holman Incorporated, Electronics Incorporated, some of our many sponsors. Now, I, I expect to see Viger just try to crush it down Blunt's throat right here. Just run it right slap at him. First down and 10, Viger. They have 6.16 to go. Remember, they are not noted for their passing, but their quarterback can more than throw the football. They just haven't had to throw this year. Now they double slot. Gallery in motion. They'll run the fullback to the right. He's going nowhere. Detrick Jackson ran into a stone wall, second and 10. It was DeMond Fryson who's really come alive tonight. Well, there's not a lot to say about that, Lee. That was just a straight dive in the fullback's belly. And DeMond Fryson was right there just to tattoo him. Just an excellent tackle by DeMond Fryson. Second and 10 is not a good call for a run-oriented offense. And normally, uh, Viger's always in like second and one, second and two, at least prior to this game. Boy, is this a, a great tune-up for these teams for the playoffs. Second and 10. Whirlybird, Jones to the left, Jones to the 20. Jones hitting down at the 22. He got two, and Robert Malone was there to deck him. But again, Jared Ellis, number 52, is there to turn the play back inside. Your outside linebacker that has contained has to turn the play back inside, and time and time again tonight, Jared Ellis has been on the left side of the Viger offensive line and turned the play back in where DeMond Friesen and, and the inside linebackers could make the play. Very number one is Anthony. 
Stephanie Parker coming in along with number 30, Dedrick Jackson. That whirly bird we talk about is where the quarterback does almost a 360 turn and options either left or right. Third down and seven. Damian Jones says, I want a timeout with 4.55 to go in the fourth quarter. 7-7 seven, seven is the score at Pritchard Municipal Stadium. Comcast Cable, WNTM 710 High School Football. Game of the week will continue in 30 seconds. Some of the pride of Pritchard fans turning out. I guess the two big words today in this area, Palmer and Pritchard Stadium. Arnold Palmer drawing a big gallery at the Moors. And right here, Byron Blunt at Pritchard drawing a huge turnout. Third and seven by Garat. They're on 23. Here is Jones back to pass from the left. Throws and it's intercepted at the 35. Down to the 30. Blunt has the ball finally tackled. On the play is James Barron. Barron's a man of the moment right now. He was hit by Damian Jones, the quarterback. That is the third interception of the night for Blunt. Lee, I know Damian Jones threw the interception, and I'm gonna tell you right now, he might have passed the lick of the night. He hit James Barron so hard, the ground shook in Pritchard. I thought the ground was shaking as we entered the stadium tonight. Uh, it's just shaking now, but I'm going to tell you, they tried to do something that they don't do a whole lot of, and that's throw the little curl in the middle, and James Barron was right there to take the ball away. Larry Casher will stay in and play offense. He is flanked out far to the left. We know he has great hands because he has seven interceptions. Now they move Miller to the right. They better hurry. They got down to seven seconds on the play clock. First and 10 from the 28, back to pass, James. He's got time. He throws over the middle, Miller's got it. What a catch, down to the 20. You know, he's had a remarkable game tonight. Cleve Smith on his back for the tackle. Well, and that play's been open all night, and, and give credit to Ben Harris and his coaches. They have gone in at halftime, they made this correction, and they put this play back in it and said, this play is there, we're gonna throw it, let's stay with it. Mark Miller's catching him like Marty McDowell tonight. Well, Marty McDowell's a good teacher. He's a great player, and he's a good teacher, too. That middle is soft, and that's where they're throwing the football, right in the middle of the field. At the 20, second and two for Blunt. Single setback. Here's the sprint draw. Marset 20, Marset 15. Blunt down from behind at the 14. That's a first down, and a great tackle by Roderick Jones from behind. Well, he'd have made Anthony Rao proud then, Lee, because he made a tackle like Anthony Rao used to make right there. Open field, one-on-one, -on -one, and he makes it. Once definitely got the momentum lead, and it'll be hard to keep them out of the end zone here. But if there's a team in Alabama that can keep them out, it's the Viger Wolves. It's first down and 10 at the Viger 14. 3.51 to go in the fourth quarter. We're tied at seven. Watch for Frazier, Lee. This is where great players really come out in these situations. James will take the snap from center. Trips to the right. And a solo receiver to the left and a single setback as Franklin back to pass James. James throws to the left of the goal line. He wants it all, and he throws it into the crowd. That was an excellent play by James. He just threw the ball away over into that mass of people over there. Must be a, a thousand people right over there where he threw it, Lee. Casher uh, was the intended receiver, but that was well overthrown. 3.31 to go, clock stop. James goes to the far sideline. Wants the play from Ben Harris. He takes off the headset and screams it to him just to be heard. You know, that, that, that man, Lee, I can't tell you what he's done for this community. I'm just proud to know Ben Harris. Well, I think we can tell just by looking at the uh, crowd here tonight. Oh, you're right, Lee. He has just he's done a remarkable job, a remarkable man. Second down, 10. At the Viger 14 for Blunt, back to pass James. James looks left, James throws to the left, he's going for it all again, incomplete again, overthrown. This time he was trying to hit James's uh, tailback. Well, Lee, they're going down to the longer passes and they're getting away from the thing that brought them here, that little short intermediate, a short pass or the intermediate pass, and they've got to throw that pass to be successful against Viger. They just can't sit back and throw the ball. I think that was uh, Williams was the intended receiver. Quentin Williams they load up the shotgun for Aaron James, the quarterback, drops back to the 25. Under a rush, throws to the goal line, incomplete. Incomplete, the receiver was there. Ball overthrown, and there were two Viger rules right around the intended receiver in the end zone as that pass was thrown. Again, over the head this time, DeAndre Green was the intended receiver. Well, it was definitely overthrown, Lee. It was not a catchable ball. 
and the receiver was hit, but I don't think there was any interference. I thought it was a good call by the field judge. Well, if you were a Daphne or a Fair Hope or a school like that, you'd go for the field goal for sure. Here at Blunt, as the Leopards take a timeout, I don't know. 3.19 to go in the fourth quarter. On the Comcast Cable, WNTM 710 High School Football Game of the Week. The score, 7-7. We'll be back in 30 seconds. James Pirine is on the playing field, just giving the last second instructions to his defense on fourth and 10. They will try the field goal. I don't know if Antoine Hill has even tried one this year. He will try this from the 20 one yard line, a 31 yard effort out of the hold of Sherman Lee. Hill will go for the three to take the lead. Snap, ball down, kick is up, and it is good. He made it. Antoine Hill has become the man of the hour for the Blunt Leopards. And like I said, I'm not even sure he's even tried one this year. It is 10 7 Blunt, and Viger has 319 left in the fourth quarter. This is the Comcast Cable, WNTM 710 High School Football Game of the Week. We will return in 30 seconds. This guy liked to jump. <laughs> Antoine Hill is the man of the hour for Blunt as the Leopards kick off and Bryson booms it downfield and backing up to catch it in the end zone is one of the uh, Viagra Wolves, but he can't run it out because uh, Ellis Jones was uh, signaled for being in the end zone. It comes out to the 20 on the touchback. That is the first field goal here at Blunt High School for Antoine Hill. Was that the first time he's even tried one, Rick? I, that's my impression from what the coach said. Lee, is this the first time Viger's been behind all year, or did we have them when they got No, Davidson was ahead game. of them six to three, remember? But not with three minutes oh, and no. seconds to go in the, the game. The first time they've been behind in the second half. But this is good for him, Lee. This is good for him down the road. This will, this, this, this can be good for him. From the 20 now, they're 80 yards away, trailing 10 to seven. Damian Jones takes, he'll throw over the middle, incomplete. He tried to hit Vellas Jones on a slant and the ball thrown behind him. It'll be second and 10. You know, they say, Lee, you gotta dance with the one that brought you to the dance. That big old offensive line brought them to the dance and Maurice Gallery brought them to the dance. I bet you Coach P. Ryan will be running Maurice Gallery, unless Maurice Gallery is hurt, Lee. Now, we don't know that, but we have not seen him. I don't think he's even carried the ball in the fourth quarter. I don't, I don't recall that either. He's not in the game, Lee. Second down and 10 for Viger, trailing 10 to seven in the fourth quarter. Jones at quarterback, single setback, dropping back. He looks, he's got time, he throws long and deep over the middle, he floats it up there, oh, knocked yeah. down. Knocked down by Kasher, he went over the top of Tremaine Pirine and knocked it down at the 45 as that ball was floated up there. Well, yeah, that's, that's just a big time player right there. Larry Kasher just goes up without touching the receiver and bats the ball down. He plays through the receiver as he's taught to do. Great job. That ball just hung up there, though, and gave Casher all kinds of time. Third down and 10 for Viger as Detrick Jackson checks in with the play from the Viger sideline, suddenly grown silent, trailing 10 to 7 after the interception by James Barron set up the field goal to put him ahead. Blunt. Bellis Jones, he's the speedster, flanked out to the left. Third and 10. Flag down before the play. Somebody will get hit with five yards. I want to say Blunt was in the neutral zone. Dead ball foul, encroachment yeah, on the right right. team. Viger has not scored since third third early down. in the first quarter on their first possession. Five yards That's against Blunt, man. that'll help Viger. Parker's in there as a wide out wearing number one. That's Paul Green with the call. Now Ernest Robinson runs the play in from the Viger sideline. Didi Thompson at East, veteran offensive coaches for the Viger Wolves, Didi's son plays a mean game of tennis for Birmingham Southern. Third and five, Viger, single setback, wide outs, two to the left, one to the right, they'll run and they'll go nowhere. In fact, he lost a yard or two. How about that blunt defense? They put the fullback down in his tracks as Robinson stopped by Fryson. And Lee, look who's there. Look who's there. That's Marco McNeil, Lee. Good gracious line. What kind of player is that young man? I suppose 
since I'm supposedly on the committee to, to help judge that Antoine Hill right now would be your MVP, but you gotta throw names like DeMarco McNeil in there, and who else, Rick? Well, DeMarco McNeil has, been a, has had a great game, but the one that I'm impressed with is Jared Ellis. He has done some unbelievable things on the perimeter. Fourth and five, they'll go from the 25. Jones to throw, he'll run. He's up to the 30, he's got the first down. He's up to the 32 yard line before he went down. What a gamble and what a run by Damian Jones under the pressure of the blunt defense and he got the first. 219 to go, Lee. Uh, it's just getting tight for Vigo. They're gonna have to have a big play here. And I still don't see Maurice Gallery, Lee. Ernest Robinson, here he comes. Maurice Gallery number 25 checks in. He's had a silent second half and pretty much a silent game. Of course, he's running against the uh, defense that's been the stingiest in this area. Gallery gets the call. Outside run to the right. Gallery on his feet. Swarmed under at the 39-yard line. Picked up seven to Marco McNeil over there on the far side of the field. Well, you know, most teams run a tall sweep. Viger out of the wing team, and most wing team teams do this. They give a hand sweep. Well, in other words, the quarterback just hands the ball off, and that's exactly what they did. They handed the ball off to Gallery, and he ran around the right end, picked up eight yards. It'll be second down and two. He's still seven yards shy of his per run average. Second and two for Viger. Time growing to be a concern. Jones back to pass. He's scrambling. Gets away from attack of the 35. Cut down from behind at the 39 yard line. He got back to the line of scrimmage. Jared Ellis, number 52. Uh, he's been there all night. They just hadn't been able to run around this left side. They better watch the clock. It's down to 113. Time is growing short for Viger. Yeah, they, they got to throw the ball in the dirt. They got to throw it in the dirt. Almost a minute left in this game on third down and two. Jones, he did that, he spiked it, but that leaves him fourth and two now. I don't know about that because now you only have one more chance to get those two yards. Clock stop with 58 seconds to go in the game. Blunt seven, Viger, make it blunt 10, Viger seven on the Comcast cable. WNTM 710 High School Football Game of the Week, but we'll keep it right here. Don't go away. Are they giving him a timeout? No, they can't give him a timeout. Um, Lee, I don't know if that was the right call or not. I mean, I said to do that, but I didn't realize it was third down. And, and that well, it could have been worse. It could have been fourth down. Yeah, it sure could have. And that's happened in a game. It I'm has. Associated with it. Yes, All right, sir. fourth down and two. They'll run Jones. Let's see the Whirly Bird to the 40. He'll get the first down. He's at the 45. He steps out of bounds inside the 50 to about the 47-yard line. James Barron was there for Blunt. But once again, the quarterback, Jones, comes up with the big run. Well, he did, Lee. Now they're on the 49-yard line. they got 54 seconds to get the ball down, at least for try to try a field goal. And this is getting time as a precious commodity now. It is an ally of the Blunt Leopards. It is a, it, it, it's a liability of the Viger Wolves. The ball went out of bounds at the 49. They're 49 yards away from a touchdown out of the double slot. Ryan in motion to the right. Jones back to pass. Jones has time. He throws, and it's going to be caught. And then caught. It is caught under the flexion by Gallery. He was bright who got it. And then he was hit. And the ball was caught by Gallery at the 19-yard uh, line. I can't believe that play. A la Franco Harris. The only difference in that play in Franco Harris was great catch in the Super Bowl was that Maurice Gallery didn't have open field. The ball was thrown up. Wright was the intended receiver right down the middle of the field. Gallery, I mean, uh, the defender comes over, knocks it away into Maurice Gallery's hands. 44 seconds left to go. First down for Viger, and the ball is played by Jones, stopping the clock at 40 seconds. 40.3 to be exact. We'll keep it right here. Boy, I tell you what, you talk about games that live up to their expectations. This has gone beyond. 10 to 7 blunt Viger in field goal range. Now, Kuiper is their kicker. He is two for three. His only miss occurred here in this game from about 38 yards out. He was blocked. Kuiper, who also spends a lot of time on the baseball diamond. But Viger may go for the touchdown with 19, uh, 40 seconds to go. Gallery in motion. They'll give it to Gallery running around the right side at the 20. There's the cutback. He is tackled at about the 18-yard line by Devon Fryson. Well, now time is that time's ticking. There's 29 seconds to go. And Viger's got to get their team right. uh, set up on third down and nine. 
And if they spike it, then they have to go for the field goal. Jones, a quarterback with 20 seconds. He takes it, spikes it. Now you're looking at fourth and nine. Now, the referee signaled the play dead before the ball was snapped. Now, I don't know what Paul Green was doing there, but whatever he did, he was doing it in the best interest of the game, I can assure you. Third and nine, and the ball was spiked with 18.3 second seconds. Second down, man. second down. Well, the scoreboard, the clock is running again. Here's Jones up to Lenskrum as he spikes it again. And that stops the clock with 10.6 seconds to go. They have not worked the clock as well as maybe Viger fans would hope with that running play killing a lot of time. And now the game rests on the shoulders of Jamie Kuyper just to send it into overtime. Jamie Kuyper had a 38-yarder block. The ball is at the 19, maybe the 18. They'll line it up. At the 24, it will be a 34-yard effort. He is two out of three this year. It'll come off the right hash mark for the tie. The ball is snapped down, up, and it is going to be short, and Blunt is going to win this game. The Blunt Leopards are going to come away with a win with 5.4 seconds to go. The crowd starting to spill out on the field, but this game still has five seconds to go. Now, this is a problem. You got to get these fans off the field. The public address announcer is urging the fans back off the field. This game is not over, at least officially. <laughs> yeah. Who would have thought the Viger Blunt game would come down to a battle of field goals? That kick came up short. It is 10-7 Blunt. They've done all their scoring in the fourth quarter. 5.4 seconds to go. And Blunt will have one play to go down in the history books. Well, they'll have to snap the ball, Lee, but it'll be definitely all Aaron James is going to do is fall on a knee, and the ball is, is the game's over. No question about that. A valiant comeback by Blunt trailing seven to nothing, and certainly to Viger, a hard fought, and what will be a disappointing loss tonight. The ball will be at the 20-yard line after the missed field goal. All Blunt has to do is just for the quarterback to take it, go to his knee, and this game is over. Blunt will go to 8-0, and, and Viger 7-1. And And the ball is taken by the quarterback to his knee. That'll do it. The final score at Richard Municipal Stadium. The top-rated team in 5A, Blunt, has defeated the second-rated team in 6A, Viger, by a score of 10 to 7. Rick Cleveland and I will be back with our recap at Richard Municipal Stadium as the Blunt Leopard fans converge on the field. Comcast Cable, WNTM 710 High School Football Game of the Week will continue in one minute. At last, I found a local company, Lynx Communication. Score at Pritchard Municipal Stadium. Blunt 10, Viger 7. This is the uh, first time I was asked to be a, kind of a voting member of the panel to pick players of the game, and they came out with the winners before I picked. But anyway, the uh, overall player of the game is uh, Blunt quarterback.